Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What's up, fifth grade, and welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 22. 22. All right, go ahead and make sure that you've got the worksheet that you need for today for this episode. If you don't have the worksheet, just check out the link below or somewhere around this video. That link will take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with all the other episodes in this Math FSA Boot Camp Series, which, by the way, if this is your first video, it's also the last video in this series, so welcome and enjoy all the other episodes before this one. All right, so go ahead, y'all. Pause the video. Solve number one and number two. Throw down your very best as if these two questions were on the test and then come on back to check your work. All right, fifth grade, welcome back now. I happen to love geometry and this is the geometry episode. I also have a song. I know. Strange, right? Miss McCarthy has a song. What? I love math. I love music. I love movement and I love motivation. So I'm going to be referring to lyrics in a song. It's called the quadrilateral song. I don't even know what I named it on YouTube. It goes, you know, I love me. No, I love me some geometry. It's a song on YouTube. I will link it below. Don't you worry, but I'll be referring to it. And I really suggest that you learn it because it will help you if you have been having a hard time remembering all the characteristics and attributes of, um, of quadrilaterals, you should totally check it out. Okay, so before we go any further, let's identify the question type for number one first. There are five answer choices, so what kind of question do you think this is? A multi-select, yes, which means there should be more than one correct answer. So we will go through them all and choose the correct ones. All right, this says select all of the properties. Another word for properties would be attributes. So if you see attributes or properties or characteristics maybe at a rectangle and a parallelogram always share. So to do that, I'm going to draw a rectangle just so when I'm looking at it and thinking about it, it doesn't have to be perfect, just helps me. And a parallelogram typically looks like a rectangle that's been kind of pushed over. It might seem as if I'm breaking these down kind of quickly, but I'm also gonna point you in the direction of a ton more videos um, that will help you with geometry too. So don't worry especially the quadrilaterals. The first one says four right angles. Well, I know that a parallelogram has four right angles. Yes, it always, it has to have four right angles in order for it to be a rectangle. In the music video that I'm gonna link below, I say some parallelograms have four right angles. You remember this quad member, the rectangle from back in first grade, right? So a rectangle has to have it, yes. A rectangle does, 
but a parallelogram does not. A parallelogram only has to have four sides and two pairs of parallel sides. So no, only a rectangle does. They do not both share those. Two acute angles, aw. An acute is so cute like a little baby. An acute angle's less than 90, less than 90 degrees. And an obtuse angle is wider than a right, okay, is wider than a right. So a parallelogram here has acute, acute, obtuse, obtuse usually. Oh, hang on, let me go back up to four right angles. So a rectangle is a parallelogram as well because a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. They never ever cross, right? So this is a parallelogram, but a parallelogram does not always look like this. Usually we refer to this as a parallelogram. So it does not always have to have four right angles. It sometimes could, I can say rectangle, yes, parallelogram sometimes does, but not always. So I just wanted to point that out there. Two acute and two obtuse angles. We've already identified that in mine, I have two acute and two obtuse angles. So a parallelogram still is sometimes, it does not have to because like I said before, a rectangle is technically a parallelogram, but a rectangle can not have two acute angles and two obtuse angles because a rectangle has to have what kind of angles? It has to have right angles, right? So we can eliminate this one. Nope. Four sides of equal length. No. The only two things that all, the only two quadrilaterals that always have four sides of equal length would be a square and what else? a rhombus, a square and a rhombus, not these two, okay? Two pairs of parallel sides, okay? So for parallel sides, we check out the bottom end, top and then side to side. So for the rectangle, are the bottom and the top parallel? They never ever cross. That's correct, right? There's one pair. And then side to side for that rectangle. Will they ever ever cross? No, they keep going on and on in the same direction. They will never ever cross. So a rectangle has two pairs of parallel sides. And for a parallelogram, check out the bottom and top. They have two, there's one pair of parallel sides. And then side to side, there's another pair. So there's two pairs of parallel sides. In fact, that is the core attribute of a parallelogram. It must have two pairs of parallel sides. So for both, that's supposed to be a P. Yes, we're gonna mark D. Okay, two pairs of congruent sides. Do you know what congruent means? It means equal, two pairs of equal sides. So that means that the bottom and the top of the rectangle, are they the same? Are they the same length? Yes. The other one, there, so there's one pair of congruent sides. Now, if we check out the side and side, are those two pairs on the rectangle congruent? Yes. So it has two pairs of congruent sides. So for the rectangle, yes. What about the parallelogram? Bottom and top? Yes, they must be congruent and side to side, they must be congruent in order to be considered a parallelogram. So yes to that too, we can mark E. Again, check out the geometry song that I've linked below to help you with some of this vocabulary. It can be pretty intense, but it can also be pretty fun. So please check it out. All right, y'all, for number two. Number two, ooh, this is my favorite kind of question. This is a matching item. Why is it a matching item? Because there are rows, there are columns, and we have to match them. All right, for each attribute, Fill in the bubbles to select all the shapes that always have that attribute, that characteristic, that description, okay? We're gonna read what is in the row, and then we have to decide if each one has that, okay? Exactly, so let's look. We've got, for the first row, it says exactly two pairs, two pairs of parallel sides. Um, before we even get started here, I'm gonna go ahead and make this little flowchart to help me understand. So, this is mentioned in the geometry song. 
So first we have quadrilaterals. And quadrilaterals have four sides, four angles. You want to get into club quad, you need four side and four angles. And then as we move down our flow chart, we're going to spy parallel sides. So if it has, it can either have one pair of parallel sides. This little thing means parallel, one pair of parallel sides, or it could have two pairs of parallel sides. We're gonna to try to classify this further. If it has one pair of parallel sides, it is considered a trapezoid, okay? Which looks kind of like this. Sometimes we see it like this. See how that bottom and top are parallel? And then we've got side to side, it could look like that. Sometimes it looks like this, you know, and it could also be um, turned in a way too. So those are examples of trapezoids. One pair of parallel sides, bolding the pairs of parallel sides. If it has two pairs of parallel sides, it is then considered a parallelogram. And a parallelogram, it looks kind of like this, which we mentioned in the last one, kind of like that. Okay, then a parallelogram could be classified further based on its angles and based on its sides, okay? If it has four equal angles or four right angles, that's how they would be equal, it would be a rectangle based on its angles. It could also be based on its four equal sides. If it has four equal sides, it would be considered a rhombus. And then if it has both four equal angles and four equal sides, it is the square. Okay, it comes together. So those are the ways that we can classify our quadrilaterals. So we put four equal angles and four equal sides if it has both. Okay, so based on this, if we go up on the floor chart, flow chart, it means that it always has the characteristics. If we're going down, it means it could sometimes have it. We'll go through that a little bit more. So we need the ones that always have it. So when this says exactly two pairs of parallel sides, move this up exactly two pairs of parallel sides a trapezoid as one pair so no it would not have two pairs of parallel sides instead a parallelogram would so we can mark B and also a rhombus is technically a parallelogram it's just a more specific parallelogram with four equal sides but it does have two pairs of parallel sides it's underneath the parallelogram. The rectangle is also underneath the parallelogram, so it has two pairs of parallel sides. And a square is considered a rectangle and a rhombus. It has the quad, it has the characteristics of all, and therefore it's also a parallelogram. So for exactly two pairs of parallel sides, we would mark B, C, D, and E. All right, now how about the one that has exactly one pair of parallel sides? Well, which one was that? is only one, only one would be a trapezoid. It's trapped to the side, it's a trapezoid, okay? And now all right angles, okay? A trapezoid could have some right angles, but not all, so it's not K. A parallelogram could have all right angles, but not always, and the question said always, so it's not a parallelogram. A rhombus, has four equal sides. A rhombus could have right angles, but it doesn't always have right angles, so not M. A rectangle must have four right angles, and so does a square. So let's mark N and O. And now four equal side lengths. A trapezoid does not have four equal sides. A parallelogram could have four equal sides if it was also a rhombus, but it doesn't always have to. Again, a rhombus has four equal sides, but if we go up, it means a parallelogram only sometimes does. So we can select rhombus, R. Four equal sides for a rectangle, it could, but not always, but a square does. So let's mark T. All right, so these would be your correct answers there. And again, I go through all of this in the geometry song that I will link below for sure. It's gonna to be tons of fun, you're gonna love it, especially Sassy Square. And just so you know, as you watch, just know that Sassy Square has some learning and growing to do in her heart, okay? 
she is not a good example of a leader because she does put some of the other shapes down and that's not okay. So have a conversation about that, okay? She thinks she's all that, so she might need some help, some, some guidance there. This was a lot. Let me give you some more practice though for geometry. All right, fifth grade. So if you know that you need some more help with geometry, which I'm sure that you do, it's a lot to comprehend. I want you to check out the link below for McCarthy Math 155. You wanna check out unit nine. Now in order to access the videos and the worksheets that go along, with this you do have to become a member but you can totally try out McCarthy Math 155 for free for seven days I want you to take a look at it see if it's the right fit for you that's why I make it absolutely free for you for seven days to check it out McCarthy Math 155 is a jam-packed high-energy daily math intervention there's 155 videos for each grade level so basically a video for each day there are so many teachers and schools and districts and parents who are homeschooling and using McCarthy Math 155 to support. And guess what? The students love it. I get emails all the time from teachers and from school leaders and from parents who are like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I found McCarthy Math 155. So check it out for free for seven days. You'll fill out a form to get access for that seven days and I will check on you to make sure that everything went okay. All right. Next, if you know that you need some more practice with the FSA style questions, I'm including the link to my how to pass the math FSA series. This was the first series that I created on YouTube back when the FSA for fifth grade was a computer-based test. Now it's a paper-based test, so some of the questions, they might look a little bit different just because there was a computer-based test back in the day and now it's a paper-based test. That's why I created the FSA Boot Camp series just for you. Still, you should totally check out the How to Pass the Math FSA series. Click that link below. I'd love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm also on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, could you take a quick second to smash that like button? Not for me or to make me feel good, but to support my mission because there are so many third, fourth, and fifth graders out there who struggle with math. They want it. They want to learn how. They want math to make sense, and that's why I do what I do. I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders as possible. So when you do that small part, of smashing that like button, you are transforming the lives of students you don't even know. And that is so awesome of you. So thanks for doing that. And finally, before we wrap up this last episode in the Math FSA Boot Camp series for fifth grade, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the generation that we have been waiting for. So find your light. Find what it is in life that lights you up and shine it right. Watch out world because we have this generation of fifth graders who are about to step it up and make this world a better place. When y'all have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I will hopefully see you all in some kind of episode down the road. It's been my pleasure working with you on the Math FSA Boot Camp series. Go back and watch as many as you can to get ready. I've got McCarthy Math 155 and how to pass the Math FSA and all kinds of things coming your way. So check it out and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.